We're back for round two. Today we're looking at another batch of dead and mostly dead games. There's no rules this time and no reason to delay any further. Let's get started. So there was like next to nothing online about Virtual Paradise. Pretty much all there is is a website and that's it. I only found this one, I think, through viewer recommendation. Now for some reason, the people or person behind it decided it was a good idea to make an Active Worlds clone sometime around 2007, but possibly a bit earlier. Not even a second life clone or anything more actually relevant. No, Active Worlds. This one did have a few players on, but when I say a few, I mean it was like five at most. I don't know how much it costs to run a game like this, but I actually have no idea how they're still keeping this one running, if it is expensive, because I don't see how they're making money. So enjoy this one while it lasts. I went with Travis as my name and managed to get it, and when I tried to install it... <laughs> So I was going through the game's 19 worlds in alphabetical order. First up was one called Air Park. It took a bit to fully load in, but when it did, it looked kind of cool with this black on blue color scheme. It was also here that I realized it was actually just Active Worlds too, as it had many of the exact same systems. I headed into the nightclub and it was blasting copyrighted music, so I've got to replace that. Out in the back halls of the nightclub, I found the avatar menu, absolutely chock full of stolen avatars and copyrighted characters. Hello. Gordon Freeman. This shit is not legal. Back inside I also noticed a theme park ride, or what I think is a theme park ride, ported into the game. I'm not sure about the legality of this either, so I hopped onto the next server. Within server 1, the crime counter is already pretty high. Next up was Blizzard. This seems to be the sort of hub world for this game, with tutorials lining the spawn as well as news and announcements. I also found a stormtrooper sitting around, so add that to the copyright infringement counter. I even tried calling it out in game. As I was waiting for things to load, I got asked by Dingus McRinky Dink who I was, but I kept silent to not blow my cover. Once everything was loaded up, I headed to the town hall and immediately fell through the map since they forgot to put a floor in. Luckily, I knew how to fly since it was the exact same control scheme as Active Worlds, which also had flying. Anyways, inside they were using Mac computers, had some stolen box assets from Half-Life 2, radios from Fallout 4, and Coca-Cola vending machines. Aside from the stolen assets, this place also hosted a bunch of development pictures for the map, showing how it's progressed throughout the years. This place seems to serve as a little museum for the game itself. There was also this city council meeting room inside. Now would be an excellent time for procreation. Parked outside was a DeLorean from Back to the Future. I was also still being questioned in the in-game chat, with people on so enamored by a new player that they were speculating who or what I was. This car here was just blasting copyrighted music. Next I headed down to the iconic Come Back Soon strip to see what was going on. First thing I found was Good Burger. Crazy enough, I managed to find an unlicensed diner. Heading inside, it still managed to be one of the most infringing places so far, with assets from Minecraft, Halo, Active Worlds, and Big Cool Tony. Right outside the police department was a frame from Robocop, and past this I think I'd seen enough crime in one world, and I moved on to the next one. This one was called BZN, or Buzzin', and I thought this was going to be another club or a game room or something, but I was just locked in this weird room, with all other rooms locked or blocked off, so there wasn't anything to do here sadly. This one was called Grid, but it's so unfinished that I, I can't even, I, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. I can't even tell you. So similar to Active Worlds, this game has a couple build servers where you can just mess around and build whatever you want. Although since this game has like three players, it seems like no one's ever actually built anything on the build map, as all the space outside of spawn was just empty. There was maybe like one building, but it just went into the terrain and looked super buggy. So I don't even know if it was supposed to be there. This one was called Millionaire, and was a very likely unlicensed one. It was a recreation of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, branding and all, but it had another logo for Supernova Entertainment Studios on the floor. I looked into this to see if maybe, just maybe, they managed to land a sponsorship with a game dev studio or something, but it seems to be a fan game studio that built this. Although while looking into this, I also found that they've recorded full episodes of the show within the game. Roll the clip. A bar of which of these is referred to as an ingot? Chocolate? Metal? Candy? Soap? Hmm. 
three questions in and I think I found the first bump in the road. And unrelated to this, but I also found out Who Wants to Be a Millionaire has its own fan discussion forum called MillionaireFans.net, which is crazy to me. Anyways, I no clipped out of bounds and found all their secrets and tricks, including their intro. I have discovered their secrets. They even had a whole Halloween version of the show set up and ready to go over here, so this wasn't just a one-time thing. This one was called Party, but to get in I would need to sign in with Discord. I was not doing that. This was another weird and small one with a tree floating in space on a weird cube platform. I tried flying away to see if I could find anything, but this is it. Where's everyone going? Bingo? This one was just bingo, but there was little house sitting just beside it. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Just a little fun house. That's it. So I think this one was either broken or it was very experimental. With test three, we were back in business with the unlicensed stuff. And on top of that, it was super weird. This one had the Ghostbusters firehouse right out of spawn, which I don't think is infringing to make, so that's fine. Nice build. Right outside of a nice little house was a lady with a rotten face. The only other interesting things here were the full Titanic and more who wants to be a millionaire assets. In general, this one's title was not lying. Definitely a test map and a lot of just weird stuff on this. This one was unfinished, but it seemed like an actually cool little cyberpunk map being worked on. A couple guys even joined, or were already in there, and they were even moving around, but they weren't saying anything in chat, so I don't know how real they actually were. So while Mars was a bust, VP Build actually had some builds in it. Crazy, I know. Having a look around, even the signs here were pretty much identical to Active Worlds, being very reminiscent of some I found in a build world there. There were also some very recognizable buildings in this one, and not one with two spots. Overall, this one had a lot of little houses and similar buildings, with a handful of unfinished larger builds also scattered around. There wasn't really any standout WOW buildings that I'd specifically like to show off, but for the most part, everything here was pretty well built. I did find Flex Island, though. I did use the inspect tool to figure out who made the towers from before, and it was actually one of the guys I'd seen earlier, so I went back to Blizzard to ask him about it. It seems like the guy just wanted to build them, and that it was actually a big project according to him. The guy seemed possibly like a dev, the owner, or at least a regular, so I asked him if the game was using the Active Worlds engine, and I got a response saying that it's based on Active Worlds, but the code is legally different. VP School is the game's dedicated tutorial map, and for some reason, they just didn't finish it. So it ends pretty much after one step. You learn how to move, go through a gate, and that's it. It just stops. It's unfinished. This one was a fantasy RPG within the game, which had a Cyber City wizard right in spawn. I headed down to the local pub, and it had an iconic mushroom bartender inside. This one seemed to be a map that was built for dozens or hundreds of players to be playing on at once, because it was expansive. Like, really, really big, so it was really weird just wandering around it alone. I kept waiting for at least an NPC or something to come along, but they never did. Also, it was very clearly unfinished in a lot of areas, like most other maps in this game. I ended up in a cave and it went on for a while, ending in a secret passage into an underground lair. When I walked outside of it, it was just an endless void of nothing, so I went on to the next map. So this one seems to be where they film their game shows and news broadcasts. If they're real and anyone can find me one, let me know. It also just had a floating Google Doc with some kind of agreement on it, but I didn't bother reading it. They also had a few signs up for a company called Wayland International, but I couldn't find anything on that, so I don't know if it's real. One of the rooms was still a work in progress, and even had notes from the creators reminding themselves what to do next, including looking to Jimmy Fallon for inspiration. One of the rooms had some kind of movie set or something, with a couple goons sitting at desks with inspirational posters beside them. There was also a companion cube upstairs, so one more for the copyright infringement count. Also on this map was some kind of maze game show in here, but I don't think it was up and running. Final one was called 3D, and thankfully it was another decently sized one, with the only issue being that I think it was also in Dutch, but I could be wrong, it could be something else. This one was supposed to be some kind of town, possibly based on a real place, but I couldn't tell. It had a bunch of seemingly real brands, but none of them were in English, so it was hard to tell. Damn. Next up, I found a little game center with a very scary sound constantly playing. Alongside a bunch of real games. Illegal. Prison. Straight to jail. 25 to life. I tried writing on the wall here to leave a tag, but sadly kept deleting my messages. Finally, I found a little hardware store with various power tools, so if you're looking to do a little handiwork, uh, be sure to stop by this place. 
Personally, I picked up a power drill myself because I got some business to attend to later. I'd recommend checking this one out, but just with the reminder that there's only like 10 real worlds on it. Also, I'm not 100% sure if it's safe to download. I'm not saying that it's got anything malicious on it, but you never know. So stay safe if you're going to try it out. If this one had tried to replicate Second Life instead of Active Worlds, I feel like it would have had more success, but at this point it's too late. I wouldn't be surprised if within a year they're down to a handful of servers left because I don't see how this one is staying up. Worlds Chat, also called Worlds.com, Worlds, and now Bowie World, is a virtual world game from 1995 which had users on a spaceship where they could talk and hang out. If you saw part one, this is the same game as Worlds Chat J, but with a few years of updates on top. Nowadays, the company responsible for this one is all in on crypto, NFTs, and the metaverse, and they're currently working, or I think they are, on some kind of David Bowie World NFT something or other. Whatever, it sounds bad. I really thought this one was gone, but they just had the link to download it basically camouflaged on this page talking about it, so we're good to go. World started off with me as this little penguin fella, and the game wanted me to use a code word here to activate my account. To get the code word, I had to answer a full, giant questionnaire. Hobbies, computers, antiques, big fan of art, huge fan of boating on my yacht. Oh, yo, we got some acid jazz, some alternative, we got some baroque, we got some show tunes, got some ska likes. I like gaming and pizza. I hate homework and being grounded. I am 30. I filled out this entire thing and didn't even get an email with the code word. I'm gonna be honest, I thought this was game over after this, but I tried the simple action of just closing the account creation tab, and it worked. Having a look around and based off the HUD, this game did not function online anymore. Or at least this version wasn't working online, so I was fully alone in this one. I kinda got my mind blown here, this game having reflections. This game has reflections? That's insane. Just thought that was cool for a game from 95. So every tab here on this spinning info box took me to a website. Sadly, none of the tabs were actually working though. Heading into the avatar room, they had a ton of avatars on selection. All kinds of themes like animals, people, strange people, characters, and a couple others. Oh yeah. Can I be him? I want to be him. Oh shit. I went with my boy Luxter, who was not impressed. Bingo. A bingo. So this is Googie's best friend. Round man. After this little avatar adventure, I went into the Gallery of Metamorphics, which nearly crashed the game, so I decided I'd return later. Before I left, I had a little look around the lobby to see what else there was. It seems like these pink textures are where ads would go, but clicking on them now just takes me to Amazon. It also seems like this is another one sponsored by Coke. So, add it to the list. Heading down to the auditorium, they apparently had some poetry readings at some point, every Tuesday and Thursday, but um, I'd be willing to bet that this was dead long before the servers went offline. The first place I checked out was called Hang, and instinctively, I hovered towards a sign with multiple flashing lights on it, telling me to click it. Now this place was an absolute assault on the eyes design-wise, with moving textures, weird fonts, random images, and bright colors, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't like it. Now this place has a bunch of rooms for discussing different genres of music. First thing I did was head on into the metal room. This is so metal. After this I turned around and there was a music news tab called Today's Biz Buzz. Looking into it, it seems like these are news articles from around September of 2000, so they're off by a little over 20 years here. The alternative room was pretty bare bones with this lady just standing around. The country room though, immediately transformed into a barn, and for some reason there was a dead guy out in the field. No clue what that's about. That guy's dead. The classic rock room was actually seizure inducing, so I can't show that for more than a second. The hip-hop room was absolutely created before 2001. <laughs> huh. 
The rest were kind of just boring, so I headed over to the event stage. Going up some stairs, there was a picture of a man staring at me. I take it this is some 2000s relevant musician, so let me know who it is. They also had posters for U2 and Elton John up here. Since there were obviously no performances, that's all there really was to the event stage. Next up was the chat deck. They had rooms here for various groups, like for teens and married couples. But these are pretty much all boring, empty, gray rooms. Birthday? <gasps> Yo! Hey. It's my fucking birthday. I decided it was time for a little shopping, so I headed down to the store. They had an ad up on the window for their trivia contest, but when I walked up to it... Huh. Actually, inside the store was just a bunch of JPEGs of various celebrities. I found the list of people that the site actually partnered with here. Since they pretty much advertised themselves as Bowie World now, I checked out the David Bowie store first, and none of it worked. Right outside the Elton John room, some music started playing for about two seconds and then stopped. Is that Ezra Miller? I left the shop after this and just kind of started wandering through the halls. They got real grimy at one point in the staircase, but I did find this two-floor room dedicated to Hanson in it. And from the looks of it in here, uh, this room had more effort put into it than the David Bowie and Elton John rooms combined. Next up was one called Animal House. It was some kind of grimy, nasty college frat house. Inside I swapped over to Yagami from Judgment, but I backtracked on that and went with my boy Rufus instead. I played a little darts and won in a solid 52 throws. Holy shit, look at this f***ing rat. <laughs> Sadly, their gamer room was closed, so we'll never know what kind of depraved shit they were up to in there. And the rest of it was also just locked up and nasty, so that's it for the Animal House. I headed to the club, and it went from a nightclub to scary hell mines in about 10 seconds. I don't know why. The mines here led right into the basement of the animal house, so there's probably some secret hidden lore here connecting the two. Next up on this game was one that probably looks pretty familiar to those who saw the World's Chat Japan segment, as this was the same world center from that version. I looked around for a bit in search of one specific room, the Googie room. I see you. I see Googie. Googie's f***ing theme song. After Googie, I found this weird sky area, which looked nice at first, but this music. This music just made it creepy. I, I was not a fan of this. On top of this, it was pretty much empty completely, which made this one of the weirder maps in the entire thing. I hopped into the garden pod next, and it was pretty nice. For once, the music wasn't, like, scary or anything, and this place was one of their nicer ones. Nice flowers, trees, and music. Now, I was really looking forward to seeing what was in the VIP garden, but sadly I was locked out, so we're never gonna know what's in the primo garden. Sorry. I also wanted to try out the Funhouse pod, but this was also locked for non-VIPs, which really sucked big time. Like, it really ticked me off, if I'm gonna be honest. I, I almost lost my cool. Next up, I checked out the DCN World, which I saw was the Digital Club Network. It seemed like in the past they held concerts or something in-game, and held recordings for them here, but they were long gone by this point. So this is pretty much the one world that the company actually talks about anymore, and they've pretty much based their entire advertising campaign around it. Bowie World 2 wasn't much more than a weird, gloomy level with the occasional David Bowie poster on the wall. It was just a few streets in a monochrome cityscape, but through one door I did find another weird little sub-area. One of these paths took me to a room with a bunch of Bowie's paintings, but being rendered in 90s graphics did not help them. A bit up ahead was what I'm going to call the Church of Bowie. Near the back wall inside, there was this demon thing spinning around in a beam of light. Now, if this is some kind of weird David Bowie reference, uh, please let me know. Down below was a stage where I assume you could watch Bowie concerts at one point. I went over to an area called Decades after this. It was just a little area showing pictures of David Bowie throughout the years, from the 60s to the 90s. Next up was the David Bowie Chaos Room. BowieNet will launch the first ever real 3D music site on the internet. World's 3D CD Bowie World. As always, David Bowie is on the cutting edge of internet technology. And once again, he's ahead of the curve with a unique 3D virtual world experience. 
After wandering around for a bit, I went up a little staircase which took me to a desert gas station. There wasn't anything to this, but it was something different. So it seems like this game had a crossover with the WWF at some point. Down in the shop zone, they've got pictures for the Rock vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin, so someone could timestamp this with when that was. I clicked on one of the shirts, and since the page was down, it pretty much softlocked the game, and I had to restart. This just seemed like a place to hang out and talk with fellow wrestling fans, but they did also have a dance floor. Most of the stuff here that didn't work or simply led to more modern websites. And also the, uh, the WWE is super tight gripped with their stuff, so I don't want to shout too much. This one was called BT Open, which I think stood for Big Time Open. It was some kind of news hosting world, and they had three different paths to go down. Big Time, the Garden of Tranquility, and Cyber Parliament. I started with Big Time, which was this pyramid lighthouse building. It wasn't much more than that though, so I moved to Cyber Parliament, which had a pretty cool intro. This one was apparently made to voice your thoughts on the day's hot topics. So I'm guessing here that at some point all these screens had some news on them or something. And you could discuss it here with others. Finally, I checked out the Garden of Tranquility. And like the others, every site this one linked to was long gone. They did have this little hedge maze a bit further up, which was something at least. Next up was another music partnership with the Aerosmith world. This was just a little stage with some Aerosmith posters around the place, but there was also a bunch of avatars locked up in these little pods. I tried to get backstage, but the bouncer held me back, which caused me to clip into the wall above him. Last up in the Aerosmith world was this Aerosmith diner. They had a bunch of stuff on the menu, including Tyler's special sauce. They also had this real grease ball back here in the kitchen showing me his ladle. Next up was the Yankee Stadium. I got here and the crowd started going nuts. For some reason, their website still has a video link to a news broadcast talking about this one. So I'd wager it was probably one of their bigger partnerships. I ran the bases because how can you not do that on a baseball map? and then I headed backstage. Next up was a map promoting the Blair Witch Project, which started in another diner, with food puns related to the movie. Same greasy chef and everything. This map had little journals and notes you were supposed to find, with an example one in the diner here. There were supposed to be like 40 or so out in the woods, but when I walked around for a good 5 minutes I couldn't find a single one, so I don't think this one still works. If you think about it though, this is, or was, basically a 90s version of Slender the Eight Pages. Like, think about that. Walking in the woods, finding notes, it's the same thing. With this place done though, there was one more place I had to check out, the Gallery of Metamorphosis. I had to click through a barrage of errors and problems, but I managed to get through. And, well, it sucked, and I couldn't do anything, so that's that. I'd say to give this one a download if you want to experience what's essentially a time capsule to the late 90s to early 2000s pop culture. It's fun just having to walk around and looking at all this old stuff, and it makes me wonder if in 20 years people are going to be looking back at games today with the same curiosity. Maybe something like Fortnite or VR Chat. Either way, definitely a step up from the Japanese client, but to be fair, I think this version had a couple years worth of added features. My only wish is that this one still worked online, and maybe it does, but if that's the case, I couldn't figure it out, and I couldn't get it to work, so. That's that. That's really it for this one though, and it's probably the last we'll ever see of Gogi, so moving on. There is another virtual hangout program, which I'm going to call there.com from here on out, because calling it there is weird. Bad name. It's from 2003, making it one of the older ones, but it's still up and running just fine. It did shut down in 2010, but reopened in 2012. I actually have no idea how they're even still up, because this is one of the more actually dead ones. This one had a bunch of 2000s relevant corporate sponsorships and partnerships, mostly a bunch of stuff with MTV and its brands. There.com also partnered with the United States military to create a military training sim using the game's engine and systems. So basically, while one group of teens was having fun dancing on the beach, another group was training for armed combat. I don't actually think this mill sim was ever made publicly available, and on top of that, I obviously don't know how much use it got, if any, but it is real. 
Starting off in the character creation, the base male is 100% Captain Rex. After a little customization, I had created a new form of Tony. Big cool Tony. Hey. Hey. What do you know for me then, yeah? Next up, I had to actually install the game. The website promoted a free trial, and let me tell you, they were very deceiving. This game costs money. Cold hard cash out of pocket. So you better enjoy what we got here, or else this was a complete waste. The actual install screen had some jock jams playing though. So we'll call it even Steven. First up was to check if anyone was on. I don't know if I checked everything, but it did say that two others were maybe on. I don't know. Like most other games on here, the control scheme mainly used arrow keys and it didn't have mouse look unless you held control. Whoa. I went into the activities page to see what was going on and there were some events listed as happening now. I never found any going on though, so I don't know how accurate that is. Down at the bottom, I noticed there was a button telling me to get help. After fiddling with the settings for a bit, it was time to get back to business. By this point, I didn't know how to mouse look, so I was trying to see the instructor's message by jumping. From this, I learned Tony has an NBA pro level vertical. I was informed by the game I could make some quick cash by getting some plastic surgery, so I figured why not. After about 20 pounds of beef and a jaw that could not only cut diamonds but turn them into dust, I was back in business. Oh! Holy! Holy, bud. After aimlessly wandering around the tutorial zone for a bit, somehow, for some reason, at 1 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, there was another guy in this game. Not only was there another guy, but he was rocking my look hard. Sadly, he, uh, he scurried off, and I never saw him again. There's someone here. I followed behind him shortly after to end the tutorial and maybe find my doppelganger, but spoilers, uh, I never did. Never. He, he, he just disappeared into thin air. This is the one guy that's probably played this game in the last year. And he's gone. I looked around for a bit and sadly, this dude was simply gone. I had lost my only opportunity to find someone in this game. I stumbled into a realty office and had a look around at current housing prices, but they were fairly expensive and out of my price range. Also, as a fun fact, uh, this game dynamically reacted to the 2008 housing crisis, if you didn't know. I was kind of just wandering around for a while here because it was just a beach with not much on it, so I headed to the top of the fake Eiffel Tower, where it took a solid minute to get to the top, and when I got up there, it was also pretty much nothing, so I just hopped off. I'm out. <laughs> I decided it was time to break a few boundaries, so I walked across the ocean to the nearest island. I had escaped the island, but after thinking about it, I decided I'd probably be better off just fast traveling, so I hit up an island called the Tier Tower Gate. I got to the gate and walked on through the tier. This game got weird pretty quickly. I headed inside the giant castle and sat upon the Throne of Tone. After having a quick look at the map, this one was also sponsored by Coke. I saw in the world chat that some kind of event was happening at the Bamboo Terrace, but when I got there it didn't seem like anything was actually happening. So sadly I had to find something else to do. Hey, what do for me? Okay, Tony's put on a little way. You can still jump like the best of them. I'll tell you that much. So I arrived in Egypt and went up towards the entrance to some ancient ruins which happened to have an ancient Egyptian iron door in the entrance. I strutted on inside and did some hopping around and smashing ancient artifacts, absolutely disrespecting everything in there. I went back outside and hopped onto the Sphinx, but after this there was pretty much nothing left to do besides hop all over fragile ancient architecture. I checked out the shop while I was here, and I saw that they had all kinds of transportation, like hoverboards, buggies, and hover bikes, but I was too broke to even afford renting them for a day, sadly. Just past sunrise in this Old West outdoor saloon, and Tony was posted up for a drink. Then he passed out at the bar. And this one was like, actually nothing. Just like the last one, this one was also empty. I think this sums this game up, really. White is a lake, and f***ing knee deep. So this one spawned me on top of a mountain, but Tony's got padded protection to get down so it wasn't an issue. Down below, there was a little place called Skippy's Playhouse, advertising itself as a nice little theater. Ah, spaghetti. Ah, ravioli. 
I found the tab to find active worlds, and I'm pretty sure this means I was actually the only guy playing the game at this point, or at the very most I was one of like three players. Next up was the Mushroom Forest. To be quite honest, Tony was getting a bit fed up with this game and just wanted to sit down at this point. This one had some potential, but like, actually all it is is walking around and talking if you don't want to shell out some cash for some of their premium stuff. The character creator here is solid though. Best part of the game, easily. This is one where I would not be surprised if it shut down again, and for good, within the next couple of years. Because I don't even know how they're still making enough money to keep this thing running. Second Life is another virtual world game, with this one probably being the most popular out of all of them. It launched in 2003, and from there, it pretty much took over as the definitive virtual world. With this one being nearly 20 years old, it's likely that most of the original player base has moved on, with Second Life being only a distant memory to them. Now, I don't know how many players are bots, alts, or fake, but it doesn't really matter because this game is not lacking in dead zones. This is one of the ones where it's arguable whether it's dead or not, but seeing as it peaked in 2008 and has been continually declining since then, I'd say it's fair. Anyways, let's have a look. Oh man. Oh man. Second Life was starting off weird, but that wasn't gonna stop me. Into the account creation, I started with an avatar and chose this fella down here. Meet old Pete 65. The next step was to actually install the game, and upon logging in there were a couple people in spawn, but I think they were AFK or I don't know, they just weren't moving, weren't talking, weren't doing anything. I went through the tutorial and then got myself to the character customizer. After Old Pete was finished being sculpted, I decided to ignore the recommended islands and went right to the world map. Everything in it was super slow to load and only a handful of islands were even giving me the opportunity to join, so I don't know if this is an issue on my end or theirs. I ended up going with the first one I was actually allowed to join, called Cloud Factory. Well, you know what they say, the first is the worst. This was a lot of nothing. But I did learn the voice chat button, if I ran into anyone. The first real place was called Island Paradise, which consisted of a bunch of identical beach houses on individual little islands. Flying around a bit, there was also this floating black mass up in the sky, with some random assets spread about. I hopped on this motorcycle, which had an alarm on it, and then I decided I was going to strike a pose. Here in Fisherman's Bay, they had products from miles around, as well as copyrighted music through an online radio, so I'll just play a MIDI of it here. Since I had zero L bucks, I was basically loitering around the store. Next one up was called Granel, which was just another shop or something, with this one having a garden outside. Next. Hits Expert Island started off strong with me falling from the sky to some Christmas music. I landed and broke every bone in my body, and then broke into someone's house and found this little stick fella wandering around. Next up, I went over to the dancing area. They were playing some crap dancey music. So I set it to the oldie station to relive my youthful days. Right down the street from me was a photo gallery someone made. That was... something. Right beside that was a remembrance garden, with some candles set up for what is very likely people who have actually passed away. I wouldn't doubt it. It was a little bit odd that the dance music from a nearby club was still completely audible here, which made it kind of weird and a little uncomfortable. Over in this fenced off area, which I flew into, they had some more stuff for sale, as well as this funny rainbow tiger cat thing. <laughs> After this I did a little beachfront bowling, but I could not figure out how to pick up the ball. I think my arms were too puny to lift it. Last thing on the checklist for this place was to hit up the Tai Chi station. Next up I found one called AM Corporate. I hopped a fence here and found a second life maternity clinic, but their security systems kicked me out. After this was Dust Bunny, and what do you know, it's another shopping map. There was another person here, but they just kind of stood still and then disappeared once they got close. I don't think this person's real. What the hell? They were. They're gone. Up on a map called Cedar Creek, I teleported right into someone's house, right beside them while they were sleeping. The security alarm was going off though, and it kicked me out of this one too. 
Next one was called Cake Day, all caps. Instead of a single store, this one was some kind of mall or something. There was a handful of players here, but none were moving, so I, I doubt they were real. Everything in this game also loaded so slow. Like, not even the booths I was right in front of would load properly for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Outside it was even worse, with glue cars all around, and things just weren't loading. This one also had an empty stage beside it, which I doubt has ever been used, but I'd like to be proven wrong on that. Beside that, there was an ice cream truck giving away free ice cream, but I was too short and couldn't reach the counter. So this one called Goody upgraded from a mall to a street full of different stores. I spawned in this one right next to a player, but even being right next to them on the map, I never actually saw them, so probably another fake guy. The elevator on this map was also pretty goofy. So far a majority of the maps I'd visited were just different empty stores, and I was beginning to worry that this is all this game would be. Starting off in this one, they had a house up for rent for about 20 bucks a month in real money. It was also another one that had painful rendering times and FPS. Like, I actually don't understand how this game was running so bad. It was, it was almost unplayable. I found a pizza place, but I couldn't afford a slice even if I wanted one. If you were wondering, yes, this one was just more shops and things to buy. There was this random player over here whittling away at something, but I'm pretty sure this is just another NPC or fake guy. So for once, I found a map that wasn't just selling things. This one started me off in a creepy graveyard, played a little poker with the fellas, and I went for a little tour. It seemed kind of like an asset dump, but whatever. A bunch of weird random bills were just kind of scattered around here, and after having a look at them, I found a teleport to Jan's Bazaar. I was looking around this one and somehow ended up clipping into this wall after trying to dance. I was properly stuck and just moved to the next map. This one was a small city, most buildings in white, and would you believe it, this one also wasn't trying to sell me anything. Also, at the same time, this one was just kind of boring. You couldn't go in any buildings, and that was about it. And what you're seeing is what you got. A bit further into this one was their Gamer Temple. Thought that was worth mentioning before we moved on. This one was called Estia, and right out of the gate, there was this funny broccoli guy who whispered at me as soon as I walked into this building. The building itself was some kind of building for selling property on the map, so there wasn't much to see inside. I also found out that the green dots on the map, which are supposed to be players, can just be named assets on the map, so that's great. Wandering into the woods, I found this wizard's shop, and when comparing heights with Yoda, Old Pete came out shorter. This last one was called Devilwood, and started off with me grabbing a bike and going for a little ride. To be honest, um, I don't even know how this was working, because Old Pete couldn't even reach the pedals. Inside this little house here was a few cats lying around. Nice. Seems like someone was expecting old Pete here in his Valentine's Day house. This one's name is Rabbit. Is that Rabbit just talked to me? Second Life is, um, well, it's just kind of weird. There was a lot of stuff to spend money on, but that's not really what I'm here for. This one might be worth revisiting in the future, maybe with someone who knows what they're doing. Who knows? Also, this game was nearly unplayable, to be honest, with even small islands taking forever to load simple stuff in like trees and other simple assets. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm finished with this one for now. It may not be the last time I check it out, probably is though. IMVU. This is just another simple online virtual world, but more catered towards people looking for character creation in fun fashion. From what I've read, it's up there with Roblox in terms of the amount of items on offer for avatars. This one has been around since 2004 and peaked in around 2011. Like most other virtual world games, it seems to be dying a slow death. Look at the swag on display. Holy what. I initially started off with a greasy and gross look, but once I found the bald option, it was pretty much set in stone who I had to make. I went with the classic version over the desktop version, because you gotta go with that classic gameplay. And after waiting a bit for it to install, we were in. No problems. Apparently, 52,000 people were on, which, for reference, is only a couple thousand less than Destiny 2 on PC. I'm almost certain that a huge portion of these are purely bots or AFK players. After searching for only empty rooms, there were 8,000 rooms available, so there's not a chance I can even get through like 1% of these. But I'm gonna have a look around regardless. 
I started off with one called Mystical Forest just to learn how to play the game. I thought it would be like most of the others with little worlds you could just walk around in, but this one didn't even have that. IMVU uses little set poses and animations around the room and that's it. It really is just a virtual chat room really, but I was still going to check out what kind of weird rooms there were, even if exploration is going to be a little neutered. This one itself really didn't have too much special. It genuinely was just mystical forest, like there, there was a rabbit and trees, some fog. That's, I think that's about it. Yo, we got club jams. What the hell is this? That's my favorite guy. This one had a couple buddies chilling in their gamer zone. Both were absolutely fake players, but I noticed their rule board posted up on the stairs. Gamer at work. Fighting bosses, killing enemies, stealing orbs. Honing gnomes, healing players, blowing stuff up, explicit language. <laughs> smoky ash, you got smoky ash, boy. I went into this one expecting some real activity, but again, more fake players. It was around this point when I started questioning the player count versus the amount of actual player activity in the game. I finally managed, finally, to find one with some actual people sitting in it. I asked, what's cooking? And it took them 48 seconds to respond to me, to just say, chicken. Welcome. Go back to entrance. No. Bye. <laughs> this is another one with uh, some fake players just posing around, this time on top of a big crane thing. I joined in for a bit to get in on their album cover. This one was actually unhinged. They had a dance floor full of MJ moves right next to a graveyard with a big transparent image of his face in front of it. Right that aside of that, there was also a Zex and Smoochin' room. Seems a bit in bad taste to have the weird Zex couches right beside his memorial, but hey, maybe that's just me. This was a, uh, seemed like a recreation of someone's weird, gross, ratty, rotten, disgusting basement. Pretty nasty all around. I'm in the Empire business. Harley Club was a top tier map. Every surface in the building was branded with the Harley logo. It had a bar, slots, bikes, an alligator to fight. I don't know how the building in this game works, but it seems a lot of people get carried away when adding textures to their walls and floors. Either way, still a top tier map. Everybody go to the Harley Club. It's the number one. This one was a uh, little Star Wars map. We got Obi-Wan, the ball, this uh, is Blue Lady, Luke, Yoda. This one was literal, with the club being made out of images of dragons and wolves. I stopped in for a drink, did a little posing, and got out of there. I went back to populated servers and had a look in uh, Feminine Boar Therapy. Now, uh, this is far from the only Feminine Boar server on here, so I had to check and uh, see what was going on. More fake players. Who would have guess. Although I'm actually a little relieved that these ones are fake players, because this could have been bad. This could have been really bad. I decided to end it on one last one. I just went for a random one that was on one of the last pages. Rockabilly and 50s Music Club. I, got, I gotta respect this guy. You know, he's got his dance set up, probably on here 24 seven. That was about it for IMVU, because I, I couldn't do this one anymore. I couldn't do this one. There was so many naughty, naughty maps on here. I'm sorry, there was too many. So this is a weird one. And I do wonder what the actual player count is because it's genuinely not much more than a chat room and most of the servers I joined just had fake players. I guess if you're big into roleplay, this is a decent little game. It's free, you know, but obviously it's not for me. So I'm moving on. Sub Rosa is a business game. 
You've got to set up deals and trades with other companies with opportunities to double cross them or possibly get smoked yourself. It's got some cool systems like a phone you can use to call up other businesses to set up meets or the game's wacky physics system which makes everyone walk like a bunch of goofs. This game is actually dead and to be honest was never really alive to begin with. Never even breaking 300 concurrent players online. It also hasn't had an update in years so yeah this one's uh, this one's done for. It had a couple game modes but the only one that didn't crash the game for me was world mode so I hopped into one of the seven available servers and for some reason it was private. Moving on to the second server also private. The third server crashed the game. After that I booted the game up hopped into the fourth server and it actually worked. After I finally managed to get into this one, something was clearly busted with the game's graphics because the shadows are not supposed to be jet black. I grabbed myself an M16 for self-protection and headed off into the server. I became a CEO, but apparently my guy didn't know how to drive because none of the cars would move. Uh, there was actually nothing worthwhile on the server, so I uh, tested the gun out and moved on to the next one, which was the only other working server in the whole game. Sadly, uh, this one was the exact same, pretty much, so I grabbed some grenades to play around with. Every other server crashed the game, so sadly that was it for Sub Rosa. Pretty early wrap up. I feel bad for this one being so short, so here's a couple clips of what it can be like when it is working, or when it was working. Somebody go walk! There's someone following us. No, there's not. There's no one following us. Yes, there is. Oh there's shit, there's someone a following guy. us. <laughs> what? Okay. Hey, shoot, hey, shoot! Hey, do nothing! Okay, okay, maybe not this. Hit him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> I got one of them. Run in, boys. Subrosa was a really neat concept that sadly didn't catch on and was abandoned by the developer, even after getting picked up by Devolver Digital as a publisher. Don't buy this unless you've got like 10 friends who also have it, and even then you'll be stuck playing on custom servers because the official ones are just broken and dead. Meridian 59 is a real classic, being released in 96, making it the first MMORPG. It actually originally came out in 95, which for reference is only two years after Doom came out. Just to really drive home how old this game actually is, this commercially released like two weeks after the N64. The actual game is a pretty standard 90s fantasy RPG, with the main draw of course being its online elements. It actually shut down in 2000, but was resurrected in 2002 and has been running since, even getting a Steam release in 2018. Starting off, they had an absolute jock jam playing for the account creation screen. It had no right being this jamming. After this I was into character creation. I went with Gamerman22 is the name and had a little look through the options. First thing to do was to pick a face. The customization here was actually pretty decent for when it was released but nothing really too insane. I went for a zero magic build because it's all a bunch of shit. Wizards aren't even real. I also grabbed a couple skills such as the knowledge of how to punch and I was in. I awoke at the Raza Inn with a pocket full of cash and a mace on my belt. I received a message from my guardian angel telling me how to play the game and where to go from here. It went mostly ignored, which kind of locked me out of the quest line, but whatever. I had the magic spell to blink, which used my entire day's worth of magic. From this I assume my guy just goes around staring at people since he uses so much energy blinking. Next up I talked to my boy Marcus, veteran of the orc wars. He seemed pretty chill. I had a little talk with him and uh, he told me to seek allies and friends, which is kind of hard seeing as uh, there's, there's nobody on. After leaving the place, I encountered a sign which told me to head towards the old blacksmith shop. All the finest and most mediocre of wares were sold here, so I bought a selection of items to aid in my quest, such as a leather chest piece and a new sword. A bit further into town, I stumbled across the local art gallery. There were some very nice paintings held within. Next up, I uh, went into this inn, 
and met Widow Quiznos. I tried talking to her by screaming the word talk in her general direction, but I guess she's just stupid because uh, it didn't get through to her. After these shenanigans in town, I set foot towards the ancient Cavern of the Lords, but was denied entry by my bitch guardian angel. Inside a different building, I found, uh, I, I think a real person hiding behind a fake wall. They were AFK, I think, but it's better than nothing. So, here's your one other person per game. I found an ominous scroll on the ground in this building, which read, Father, Jala is not dead. I then entered the bank and was drawn towards the sign, which simply read, Money. Once I learned the commands from the sign, I tried to withdraw 100,000 shillings from the bank, but was denied by the teller. Fed up with the city life, I entered the PNG tree forest in search of adventure. It was my time to find the Meridian 59. This is where my journey began proper, with Jock Jams to boot. Within the forest, I encountered a rebel soldier, and as I was attempting to speak with her, the music just went crazy. Damn! Holy f This game has no right having music this good. No fucking way. No fucking way. The first real enemy I encountered was a giant enemy spider although he was actually pretty chill. A bit further along, up into the mountains, I discovered the dreaded Cave of Ice and managed to make my way inside. I also found the current selection of players that I, I think are online. Most were probably AFK, but one guy did send something in chat. His name was Good Old Boy, but that sounds maybe like an NPC name, so I don't actually know if he's real. Damn! So after wandering around the dreaded Cave of Ice, well, I could see why it's dreaded, because it sucked and there was like nothing to do or I just didn't know how to do anything in there, so I got out of there. After I left, a wild snow rat attacked me and I retreated. Back in the forest, I found a little cool shack hidden away in a bush, but that dirty rat guardian angel wouldn't let me inside. After a good amount of exploration, I figured it was time for some combat, and I engaged with a wild rat in a dramatic fight to the death. Hit him. Too far away. Are you kidding me? Yeah! Hit him! It screamed like a maniac, and I stole his shrooms. After this, I stuffed four apples down my throat to celebrate my victory, but it was short-lived as a regular-sized enemy spider came to attack me next. Kill him! Kill him! Yeah! Another easy W, and more shrooms from my pocket. At this point, I was essentially a combat god, and was taking down enemies left and right. I decided now was the time to take on that giant enemy spider from before. I approached the arachnid and fought it with everything I had. I swung my sword at it, tried to eat some apples to heal. I gave it my all, but I did end up dying to my own hubris. I ended up in hell. If you're a fan of old school RPGs like the early Elder Scrolls, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to try this one out actually. There seems to be a handful of players online, and as for updates, it's entirely driven by the community. This one actually didn't seem that bad, and for being the first ever MMORPG, it's kinda sad that basically no one's playing it or even knows about it. It's free on Steam if you want to check it out and revive it. Seems like a fun game. I'm gonna do a quick outro here because I don't like dragging these out. First off, shout out to all the people who stuck around so far. That's pretty cool of you. Like, actually, thank you. Second off, uh, sorry about the three month break. I'll try not to let that happen again. Hopefully things should speed up here with video production. Third and last thing, I haven't forgotten the other series or videos, but at this point, they're out when they're out. I can't promise any time frames for those. For the iceberg, I was thinking maybe I'd just release the entire rest of it in one part, but that's gonna take like a long time, so I don't know. I'll do more of these if people are watching them and enjoying them. So if you've got any games you want me to cover, well, let me know. Thanks.